I mostly enjoyed Alien Romulus. I thought the set design was very good. The sound design was superb. Uh, the practical effects with the CG I thought were excellent. I thought the actors that were very good. So overall, I did have a very fun time with this. I thought the majority of this movie was a very, very solid movie, especially one in the Alien franchise. I really like Alien uh, 1, uh, Alien. I really love Aliens. I do not like Alien 3. I do not like Alien Resurrection. I do not like AVP, AVP uh, Requiem, uh, Prometheus, and Covenant. I really hate those movies. So, yeah, that's how I feel about the Alien franchise. So, the fact that this is the best one we had in a while, it's a good thing. But at the same time, it took inspirations from all the alien movies movies including the terrible ones and it just makes me think of them and unfortunately i don't think they did uh, this movie did the, that well and yeah there was a point where i thought that this movie was solid and then all of a sudden it just did something questionable and just kept going so yeah, that's how I felt about this movie. Like, there were some questionable things in this movie, especially at one point where I thought it should have just ended. But no, it just kept going. And that was my biggest issue with the movie. Unfortunately, if I have to talk about what I didn't like about the movie, I have to discuss spoilers. So again, like I said, I really like this movie. Uh, for the things that it did right. Um, I do recommend it. And it is the best alien movie we had in a very long time, uh, in my opinion. Um, but uh, yeah, it's not better than Alien 1. It's not better than Aliens. So yeah, that's how I felt. It's, it is a bit disappointing because this movie could have been just great. But no, it had these questionable things in it. And that just uh, lowered the quality of the movie for me. But I thought Fe uh, Feta Alvarez did a good job because this movie is basically a haunted house film with the xenomorphs and the face huggers. And I thought it did it very well. I mean, this is the kind of horror that I like and it did it so well. It does remind me of Alien Isolation, the video game. Uh, it uh, came back to horror roots. That was uh, introduced in the first Alien movie. But here it's more expanded because it's a uh, big ass outpost instead of uh, like a, a shuttle. So there's more environment, more room and stuff like that. And also um, more things to do. So yeah, uh, I thought uh, Feta Alvarez does a good job with the environment, especially like how he did with the cabin in Evil Dead and uh, also the house in um, uh, Don't Breathe. He is excellent at that. So uh, that's his talent. And I'm happy about that. It is basically a haunted house ride with uh, the xenomorphs and uh, face huggers. So that was pretty cool. So I do have to discuss spoilers. So again, like I said, I really enjoyed it. I do recommend it, especially if you're an alien fan. But I thought this movie could have ended great, but it just kept going. So, yep, that's how I feel. Now, spoilers. Okay, so the beginning title credits, um, I was already happy because it showed the 20th Century Fox, you know, just the modern logo. Then all of a sudden it glitches and turns green and goes away and it just, uh, uh, the music just uh, freezes. So it just holds on a very high note. That was cool. And then it cuts to space. It cuts to... Um, uh, like uh, the space, uh, one of the space shuttles, and uh, then you see the cast uh, uh, names like uh, Kaylee Spaney and Isabella Merced and stuff like that. So it does take me back to the '80s. It does take me back to like the original uh, Alien uh, movie. So yeah, that was pretty cool. And we see the shuttle going to the wreckage of the Nostromo from Alien. And I was blown away by that because I don't I don't think that was mentioned at all in the trailer. So I was like, whoa, we're going back to this? This is really, really cool. So it sees some foreign object in the Nostromo, which I'm, if I haven't seen the original movie in such a long time, but I don't think it was in there. I guess it happened after the events of the first movie. Uh, again, I could be mistaken. Maybe uh, it was there. We just didn't uh, see it. But uh, yeah, um, Maybe I just don't remember it. That's what I mean. 
So we see this uh, shuttle filled with all these scientists. They uh, grab uh, this object in space, and it turns out that it's like a pod that happens to have a xenomorph inside. We don't see the xenomorph, but we see the outside uh, like molding of the xenomorph in this pod. And then it cuts to Alien Romulus, and it does like the credits thing that uh, Alien did uh, with the uh, you know showing the lines and stuff, at which forms Alien, but it did it backwards because at first it showed Alien, then when it shows Romulus then the alien comes back to the five lines so that I thought was pretty cool so now we're on this mining colony and uh, this movie takes place I think about 20 years after the events of uh, Alien 1 which is like 40 years after the events of Alien Covenant if I uh, recall the, of the timeline so um, we follow these characters uh, the main character of this movie is uh uh, Rain, played by uh, Kaylee uh, Sp uh, Spaney. I hope I pronounced that name correctly. And uh, she, I thought she did a pretty good job. And oh my God, I really hate the comparisons with her and uh, uh, Isabella Merced, who plays Kay in this. They look, they just remind me of Ellie and Dina from The Last of Us. <laughs> and it's funny because uh, Kay, uh, played by Isabella, Mer uh, Isabella Merced, she is going to play as Dina in The Last of Us TV show very soon. And apparently this character is pregnant too. So so I'm like, oh my God. So every time you see them on screen together, I just think of Ellie and Dina and oh my God, I am upset because we could have had a very good Ellie. I thought Bella Ramsey uh, so far does a pretty good job in The Last of Us show. But honestly, after seeing uh, Kaylee Spaney in this and also uh, Civil War, she was excellent in that one. Um, yeah, I just kept thinking of her as Ellie, especially with the way she tied up her hair and everything, too. And uh, later on, she wears a spacesuit, uh, the same as Ellie did in uh, that the one sequence in The Last of Us Part 2. So, yeah, we could have had a very, very good Ellie. <laughs> oh, man, what a bummer. Anyway. So uh, she has been uh, working in the mines uh, alongside uh, her brother, uh, whose name is uh, Andy. And uh, she uh, got the required or not required hours uh, that were enough to leave the mining colony so she could go to this planet that she always wanted to visit, especially the fact that they actually showed the sun. Uh, but uh, when she got there, it turned out they uh, denied her request because the, there's the shortage of uh, workers in the mines. So she already got over 12,000 hours, but uh, then uh, they uh, made her, they said that she has to work uh, 12,000 more hours. So she has to be there for about five to six years then she could uh, try to apply again. And her parents are already dead. Uh, one got sick, I believe, and the other one died in some accident, something like that. So she is an orphan, she and her brother, but her brother is not biologically related to her. It turns out immediately that he is a, a synthetic. Uh, just like uh, Ash in Alien and uh, Bishop in Aliens. And of course, uh, David from uh, Prometheus and Alien Covenant. So he's a fake human. He's a cyborg. Uh, so yeah, I was uh, um, I was uh, actually surprised by that because at first I thought Andy was uh, like autistic or something like that because of the way his mannerisms and all his twitches and his clicks and him uh, trying to say uh, dad jokes the entire time. So it kind of reminded me of like a. Uh, uh, Dustin Hoffman in Rain Man when he uh, kept uh, trying to talk about the who's on first joke and uh, says it with those mannerisms. That's what I thought was going to happen at first. But no, he is a synthetic. And it turned out that uh, he is, I guess, outdated. And also he was thrown away at one point. And that's when uh, um, Rain's father finds him in the trash heap and uh, repurposes him for rain so his uh andy's prime directive is to take care of rain do whatever is necessary for rain so rain is upset that she can't leave yet and uh, people kept uh, harassing uh, andy like uh, he keeps having these seizures so he always has to reboot and everything too so whenever something knocks him down or knocks him back he gets into this uh, frozen position and she has no choice but to reboot him uh, every single time so this could uh, take a few seconds to reset or a few minutes so yeah he always has to reboot every time something big happens to him um, so Rain gets a video message from her ex-boyfriend, his name is Tyler, and uh, he has a mission for her. So he 
Um, the pilot's name is Navarro. Uh, she's an Asian woman. Uh, there's also uh, Tyler's sister, whose name is Kay, who's played by Isabella Merced. And there's another guy named uh, Bjorn, uh, who is an asshole. <laughs> And Bjorn is the boyfriend of uh, Navarro. So uh, they tell Rain uh, what they uh, need uh, for her to do, but it turns out that they don't really need her. They actually need Andy because Andy is a synthetic who is owned by the Wayland yutani Corporation, and they need him to go up uh, out in space to this uh, outpost that's been decommissioned, and the outpost's name is Romulus, uh, but... I guess it's Romulus Remus because half of it is Romulus. The other half is Remus. They At one point, they showed the both names and stuff like that. So, yeah, uh, the, the outpost name is uh, Romulus. So uh, they want to go up there to uh, grab these uh, cryo chambers uh, because they need them for the trip to go to the planet that the rain wants to go to. And it takes about at least nine to ten years to get there. So they need enough uh, they need the crowd tubes and they need enough fuel for uh, them to be uh, suspended in sleep for nine to ten years so uh, that's their main goal but they only need Andy because he's able to uh, bypass all the security locks uh, Rain doesn't like this but Andy agrees because uh, he wants uh, to protect Rain he wants Rain to be happy so she agrees eventually and then they uh, get in this uh, ship oh my god the ship designs are great because they look like garbage but they look like realistic garbage and it reminds you of the 80s with you know all the smoothness and everything looks like a rectangle and stuff like that it's really cool <laughs> so uh, they uh, fly off into space and then they go to the outpost and then they realize a uh, problem the outpost post has so because it's been decommissioned and uh uh it's been uh flying out in space and uh not uh just going in one direction uh in 36 hours it's going to hit the rings of the planet so if it does that then the whole outpost is destroyed so they have 36 hours to uh scavenge the outpost and leave so um uh, uh, Rain believes that that they should turn back, but they're like, uh, but everyone else is like, no, we have thirty six hours. We have plenty of time. Uh, we could just uh, take it and go. We uh, only need to be there for a few minutes. So uh, they, uh, it's Tyler, Bjorn, and Andy, and they were go going to go into the outpost. So Bjorn is an asshole, especially to Andy, because he really doesn't like synthetics. So this uh, this uh, backstory kind of reminds me of. Uh, uh, of uh, iRobot, uh, where uh, when Will Smith was telling uh, why he hates uh, robots. So um, in that movie, uh, Will Smith was uh, stuck inside of uh, his car, and there's another girl stuck inside her car, and they were drowning in the water. And then a robot just happened to pass by, and it grabbed Will Smith because it uh, uh, calculated that Will Smith has a higher chance of survival compared to the little girl. Even though Will Smith kept telling the robot to go after the little girl, it refused because it believed that Will Smith is uh, uh, has a higher chance of survival. So it, uh, this scene reminds me of that uh, because uh, Bjorn's mother was uh, stuck in some shaft uh, in, the in the mines and it was her and two other people and the synthetic had to lock the door so it could protect 12 others. So Bjorn is pissed off that this synthetic left his mother to die. Now, again, uh, from that backstory, I do understand why the synthetic would do that because, again, it would calculate the highest probability and uh, uh, to uh, save the majority. So, unfortunately, it believed that um, he it had really no choice but to, uh, you know, sacrifice uh, Bjorn's mother. But, again, I can kind of understand Bjorn being pissed off at the synthetic for doing that, but why are you pissed off at Andy, especially since you know Andy? But, yeah, anyway... So, yeah, he's been a dick to Andy the entire time. Heck, at one point, Andy saves him because Bjorn was about to fall backwards into this pit that was, uh, you know, destroyed because of the acid blood from the Xenomorph and the Facehuggers. So they go through this outpost at first. Um, they uh, found the crowd tubes almost immediately. And then um, it turns out that the crowd tubes only have enough fuel for three years. So they know that's not enough. Rain said that, okay, let's just go back. Let's just abort the mission. But Tyler said, we should keep going because I know where to get. 
the fuel for the cryo chambers. So uh, they, uh, so the three guys uh, go uh, straight over there, and uh, yeah, we do see the empty hallways and uh, everything is abandoned and stuff. So we didn't see that much damage. Like there's no bodies at that point there's no blood or anything uh sometimes we get a glimpse of uh, the experiments but the, these uh characters have didn't see that so yeah at the time it's just all set up for the big scares so later on they go into this uh hallway with the uh the the broken down metal and stuff uh ruined by the acid blood and they see one of these synthetics that was torn in half um so uh, they go inside the crowd chamber, and once they were trying to take out the, the fuel cell, uh, something goes wrong, and the entire chamber is under lockdown, and temperatures are rising. So it turns out that in this crowd chamber, there are 36 uh, sacks of the face huggers. And because the temperatures are rising, they are beginning to thaw and reawaken. 36 face huggers, man. Oh my god. I, I from the trailers, I thought it was gonna be like maybe five or ten or something like that. But no, 36 face huggers. Oh man, the, the chaos that's about to happen. Oh my god. It yeah, it did grab me. It did grab me. So back on the ship, um it, uh Kay is actually pregnant, so she's experiencing morning sickness. So uh she uh stays behind, she uh sleeps while uh Rain and Navarro are uh looking over everything. So uh it turns out that uh if everyone goes to this planet, um Andy won't be allowed to go because uh, synthetics are outlawed. They're banned, S especially ones uh, made by we uh, Waylon Utani. So uh, that's why um, Rain never told the truth to Andy because he uh, she is heartbroken over it. But Andy uh, still agrees that he would do anything for Rain. So uh, Andy keeps opening the doors with his fingers, so everything is open. And then they go inside the crowd chamber. Things fall apart, so the doors lock themselves shut. And Andy doesn't have the ability to bypass anything. So Rain and Navarro go over there, and Rain uh, is about to take the the module from the synthetic. And at this during this whole time, everything is a bit quiet. You don't really hear that much music. And Navarro was just uh you know checking over things. Like she sees this x-ray machine thing so uh, if she looks through it it shows her bones and everything so that was a pretty cool machine and while she's doing that all of a sudden the synthetic uh, moves and it gave me a big jump scare i jumped in the theater because i did not expect that i don't know why i didn't expect it i guess i was so focused on the x-ray thing so that's when i was like ah what the fuck so yeah the synthetic uh, uh was uh yelling at um, rain and uh it got stopped and then she grabbed the module and then she uh gives it to the guy uh tyler who then puts it uh inside um andy's module and then he has to reboot and because he has to reboot Reboot, he's frozen in this position and it's creepy as hell uh the way the actor was holding i'm pretty sure that was edited like maybe they did a freeze frame and that uh, made him look like he's frozen so that was cool like his eyes go backwards you see like barcodes in his eyes and then he's frozen in one place and not moving at all like that so that was pretty cool but uh, he was trying to investigate the facehuggers when the, uh, he put the uh, Tyler put the module in. So yeah, the facehuggers are about to reawaken. So and they realized that the rebooting could take a few minutes. So uh, during this time, uh, they uh, take out the uh, the fuel for the crowd uh, chamber, and then the facehuggers start going inside the water. And then chaos happens. Uh, Bjorn happened to have a metal uh, rod, which is like a, a cattle. Uh, shocker thing so he was holding it to his face when the face hugger was trying to uh face fuck him <laughs> so but uh, he managed to uh you know hit it away tyler was almost unlucky because it actually went through his face like the freaking uh penis went through his mouth and he was uh all, everything's going in there but he manages to get it away from him so yeah uh this whole situation was intense because now all these face suckers are trying to face fuck uh these two guys but uh andy manages to get over his rebooting process and then he uh grabs one of the uh face huggers and throws it against the wall so hard that it splatters all over it and then uh he opens
opens the door, and uh, while the, everyone was trying to run away, and these face huggers are fast because uh, they broke through the glass, and I'm pretty sure they're CG because I'm uh, the way they move and everything, and uh, they're chasing after these guys, especially with the long takes. I'm pretty sure they're not practical. So the CG models and the way they a they're animated, I thought they're really well, uh, done very well, especially with the lighting. So uh, they were almost free, but one got through and grabbed Navarro. So it was face fucking her. <laughs> so uh, it grabbed her. They're trying to get it off. But unfortunately, uh, if they uh, try to uh, take it off, the tail keeps tightening around her neck. So they uh, realize that they have to stop. Uh, they don't know what they're doing. So they decide to reawaken that synthetic. And this is one of the most questionable things about the movie. So... They uh, at the time uh, it was uh, kind of dark lighting, so we never seen the face of the uh, torn uh, uh, torn off uh, upper torso uh, synthetic. So they laid the synthetic on top of the machine, and they, they and then they hooked them up, and then they showed what the face looks like. It's Ian Holm. If you don't know this actor. He's Bilbo Baggins, older Bilbo Baggins from Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. He was Ash from Alien. So yeah, it was so weird to see that face again. This actor died four years ago. And he's back. <laughs> it's so weird. And not just that too. So whenever a synthetic is damaged... Uh, they are starting to resemble more like machines. Like they have a lot of jerky uh, movements and everything. So yeah, picture Ian Holmes' face. Very detailed, very realistic, de-aged face on this uh, thing. And it's moving so much like a machine. It really was uncanny. Like, wow, it was very disturbing. Again, maybe that is the intent, and I guess it makes sense because he is a synthetic. Um, I guess, uh, I guess the uh, it's supposed to be similar to like uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's uh, DH face on the uh, in the Terminator movies, especially the uh, later ones. And it gets, I guess, it makes sense uh, for him to be like digitized, and uh, you know, it's supposed to look uh, like a little fake looking. So I guess uh, that's the point, and. Again, visually, I thought it looked very good. Like, if you freeze frame it, it looks amazing, especially with the eyes. But when it moves, it's so bizarre, especially with the very jerky robotic motions. So, yeah, I it's so weird to see this face again. And also, it's so weird to see this. It's not the same character because it's not Ash from um, Alien. But at the same time, it might as well be Ash from Alien. I'm so confused on why they decide to use Ian Holm for this. Because in every movie, pretty much, we see different synthetics. Like David is from Prometheus and Alien Covenant. Then we see Ash, uh, played by Ian Holm, in Alien. Then after that, we see Bishop, played by Lance Hendrickson. And then I totally forgot Alien 3, but Winona, Winona Ryder is a synthetic in Alien Resurrection. So that's why I'm confused on why would they use Ian Holmes' face again for this movie. Like, it could have been any other character. It could have been another famous actor, too. Heck, I wouldn't mind if it turned out to be Lance Hendrickson again because he is still alive and it would make sense because this movie uh, is uh, taking place after Alien. So uh, he, uh, Bishop even said that uh, that uh, model, the Ash model, wasn't uh, uh, doing very well because of all the problems it had. So that's why I was thinking like maybe it should have been a different person playing that uh, synthetic. So it's weird. Like it's like a... It's like an Easter egg that's not necessary. I don't know. It is so weird. Like, I don't know if I want to commend it for trying. But at the same time, I felt like it was unnecessary. It could have been anybody uh, doing this. Again, like I said, you could have a DH'd uh, Lance uh, Henriksen. Or, you know, have a very famous actor play uh, the synthetic. Like, heck, uh, let Guy Pierce do it again. <laughs> you know? Like, show the real him instead of that old age makeup they did in Prometheus. 
So yeah, we now have R- Science Officer Rook uh, with Ian Holmes' face on it. So again, it's so weird. Anyway, uh, so he's giving them uh, information about the face hugger, and uh, he's saying that if they manage to do something to the tail, then the face hugger will let go of Navarro. So they have some liquid nitrogen, like a tank or something like that. They uh, freeze a bit of the tail of the face hugger, and then it actually lets go of uh, Navarro and then goes away. Now. In Alien 1 and also Aliens, we know that the facehugger, once it finishes impregnating the host, uh, then it uh, gets off the face and then it dies. Like, dead. It's, that's uh, their life cycle. But this one, no. Uh, because They managed to get it off of Navarro, and it is still alive. It's flailing, it's trying to attack, it's trying to get back on Navarro again. So yeah, this thing is not dead yet. So at the time, I was like, oh, she is not impregnated because it's still alive. So it didn't finish this cycle. But uh, after they uh, kicked off the uh, facehugger, then uh, uh, Rook and Andy believe that Navarro is already infected, already impregnated uh, by the facehugger. So uh, they really don't want her to leave. So Bjorn, of course, is pissed about this, especially at Andy. So he uses the uh, cattle rod to uh, stun Andy, sends him back. And then he grabs Navarro and they go to the space shuttle. So they leave. So they will leave Rain, Andy and Tyler behind. So now some stupid stuff happens because, of course, it's a horror movie. It's an alien movie. It has to have it. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, if Bjorn uh, just agreed, you know, to let Navarro stay there, I think uh, things would have been better, but nope. Uh, of course, he has to uh, make uh, more trouble for everyone. So, yes, yeah, so now Navarro is uh, trying to uh, undock and uh, leave the station and everything. And at this point, Kay is still uh, inside the shuttle. She doesn't know what the hell is going on. So she wakes up as Navarro is trying to pilot the ship. But then Navarro felt something in her chest. She takes out the x-ray, puts it behind her, and it shows that a chest burster is about to pop out. So she is about to die, and Kay doesn't know what the fuck is going on because, again, she really has no clue. She's not a dumbass. She just didn't witness anything. So uh, she grabbed Navarro. She doesn't know what to do, and Navarro says, uh, please don't let me die. Then the chest burst uh, bursts out of her, and because of that, the uh, twitchy moments, Navarro kicked up the uh, the control panel, I mean the uh, uh, control stick, for the shuttle. So it starts veering off course. Bjorn is getting thrown all over the place. Uh, trying to get back uh, to the dock and uh, the cockpit, I mean, and uh, Kay isn't doing anything, <laughs> so that was a problem. I felt like uh, uh, Kay should have, yeah, I kind of felt like Kay should have uh, tried to, you know, steady uh, the uh, shuttle at that point, but whatever. Anyway, so the shuttle is veering off course, it crashed in, uh, into the Romulus uh, base. And then um, uh, because of the collision, that made the outpost uh, off by a few degrees. So it's going to head toward the, the rings of the planet much sooner b- than before. They now only have about 40 minutes before the collision happens. So um, Tyler and Rain uh, decide to try to get um, uh, K back uh, from the shuttle. And uh, Andy is no longer like himself because he has the uh, mannerisms and personalities of the science officer, and he changed his own directive now. Originally, his directive was to protect Rain, uh, to take care of Rain, but now is uh, to do whatever it takes to uh, in the best interests of the company. So now he's fully working for Whalen Yutani. Uh, so uh, Andy uh, is uh, taking them uh, to the shuttle, and then... Um, uh, at this point, uh, Kay is still alive. Uh, she is trying to get off the shuttle, and then she sees like this giant pod in the middle of the hallway, and she's uh, frozen. Bjorn, it turns out, is still alive, and uh, he decides to uh, use this electric cattle rod and plunge it inside the pod, trying to kill it. So uh, uh, alien uh, acid blood is uh, dripping down, and uh, Kay uh, manages to get away, and... Uh, Uh, She told Bjorn to follow her, but for some stupid-ass reason, Bjorn decides to just stay there for like a minute, like staring at this pod. 
even though he witnesses the uh, acid blood and now his uh, uh, cattle rod thing is destroyed, so he has no weapons. But then he sees uh, this uh, sharp thorn uh, peeking out from the pod. Bjorn is still over there like, huh? What is this thing? So, of course, he gets uh, uh, hit by the uh, sharp end of the t uh, a xenomorph tail and it stabbed him in his eye, which made him be like, ah! So then he falls forward underneath the pod, which he already knows is dripping acid blood. But yeah, he falls over towards it instead of, you know, backing away and stuff like that. So now he's getting drenched with the acid blood. Like, he's tried to stop it, but the acid blood is uh, melting his fingers, melting his hand. It uh, hit, hits his other arm. It's melting through that. It's melting through his clothes. And, of course, a uh, big wad splashes down around his chest. And, of course, it melts through, melts its heart, and he's fucking dead. You know, I didn't like him, so I guess I was okay with his death. <laughs> Uh, I guess it reminds me of like the uh, Evil Dead remake. Uh, I think the character's name is Eric and he's the one who read the Necronomicon. So, of course, he deserves the most punishment. So that's why he's getting all mangled and stuff like that. <laughs> so uh, that reminds But I kind of like Eric more in Evil Dead compared to here. Eric was a dumbass in Evil Dead. Here, he's an asshole. Uh, Bjorn is an asshole. So, yeah, I'm fine with him dead. But... Honestly, I kind of wish that um, he can redeem. He could have redeemed himself. Like uh, he could have been like the savior of the movie. Like uh, he uh, can, uh, you know, uh, he w he would be fine with Andy like high fiving him later on or stuff like that, helping uh, everyone out and stuff like that, uh, destroying one of the xenomorphs. You know, something like that. Because uh, Fede Alvarez did a great job with that in um, Don't Breathe, where uh, Dylan, I forgot his last name, um, uh, that character, like, uh, he saved. He was actually a savior at one point in the movie, even though he got knocked out. And it was an applause-worthy moment, too. So I was hoping uh, for something like that in this movie, especially with Bjorn. But no, he uh, was always an asshole, and he died an asshole. So I guess that's it for him. So now we have Navarro and uh, Bjorn dead. And Kay is trying to escape from this alien. And this sequence was a lot like alien isolation. Like uh, uh, Kay is trying to be silent. She's going through the vents, uh, crawling and trying not to make a sound. And uh, she's trying to open the doors and everything. But uh, unfortunately, at one point that uh, she actually needs the key to go through the doors. Uh, so uh, she was uh, using the radio. Now we cut back to the other group. Okay, so this other group had no choice but to go through this hallway, which is infested with the uh, face huggers. So uh, uh, that's when Andy told them, okay, so these things do not have eyes, so they cannot go by sight. They can only go by sound, but they can sense body temperature. So um, that's why they decide to make the hallway the same temperature as the uh, the body temperature. So it's like uh, 80, 98 point six degrees or something like that. So uh, yeah, so they made it the same as the body temperature. So they are going through it very quietly. But they there were a couple jump scares, especially since there are more dead bodies of the dead scientists. So they have like a half uh, eaten uh, people with the chest bursters and everything. And at one point, it almost scared Rain, but she didn't make a sound. So they are slowly going. Through through this hallway filled with the facehuggers. And that's when Kay decides to use the radio, which uh, the facehuggers could kind of hear through this like a uh, communicator that Tyler was having. So Tyler was trying to speak as uh, low as he can, but the facehuggers know that he's there, so they're about to pounce. So after uh, they stopped hearing from Kay, uh, they, uh, the facehuggers are about to attack, and Andy says, Run! So then we have this awesome uh, chase sequence where these uh, three uh, people are going through this hallway being chased by the facehuggers at lightning speeds. And at one point, uh, Tyler takes out this like uh, uh, electric torch thing. Like uh, he turns it on, and which is uh, uh, very, very hot. So he uh, throws it away. So the facehuggers get distracted by that, but it only distracts them uh, for like uh, three seconds. So it only bought them a very little amount of time. 
So then uh, they uh, go through this hallway. Andy was first. He starts closing the hallway uh, doors. Uh, Rain goes through. And Tyler, it looked like Tyler was not going to make it. I thought something bad was going to happen. I thought that he was going to get get crushed by the doors or uh, the doors close on him. And then he gets taken down to face huggers or something like that. But no, he manages to zip through at the right moment. And then the face huggers are now locked in the hallway. So that was a very cool sequence. I really like that. And then uh, they finally get to the uh, right outside the area where they're about to meet Kay. Kay is behind the door. And all Andy had to do was open the door with his finger, but he wouldn't allow it because he sees the Xenomorph coming towards Kay. So he wouldn't open it because he knows the Xenomorph wants to uh, them to open it. And then at that point, it seemed like Kay was going to die. And then we see from Kay's perspective that the Xenomorph was on top of her. She gets stabbed with the tail, and then you see blood on the door, and you see her getting lifted away. So at that point, I was like, holy shit, they actually killed her off. That was pretty awesome. I thought that she was going to survive till the end because she is a pregnant woman. So, yeah, I and also it's Isabella Merced. Uh, she's great. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I was shocked uh, to see that because I thought that she was not going to die. I thought she was going to be one of the final girls. I thought Rain was going to sacrifice herself for her or something like that. But no, uh, she is dead. She is gone. I'm like, wow. OK, movie. Good job. So. Now it's just Tyler, Rain, and um, Andy. Because, again, usually uh, with uh, uh, characters like that, especially uh, pregnant uh, women and stuff in these horror movies, uh, if you something bad happens, to, well, something bad happens to them, it happens off screen or you see uh, some kind of like dust or debris. So uh, you don't see them uh, being killed or taken away or something like that. So when you see her actually being taken away with the tail uh, through her body and uh, you see blood and then uh, she just uh, went away, I was like, holy shit, she is dead. <laughs> But anyway, um, so uh, Andy takes uh, the two uh, to this like science lab. And uh, then that's uh, when it turns out that uh, Prometheus and Alien Covenant are considered canon. They have the black liquid again. So yeah, uh, these scientists were experimenting with the xenomorphs, they're experimenting with the facehuggers, and they're trying to extract the black liquid, and they believe that it would help create uh, more evolved humans. They showed this uh, test footage with a rat which was wounded, and they injected some uh, the black liquid inside, and then it healed itself. So I believe they called it Prometheus Fire. <laughs> Oh, uh, boy. So, yeah, the, the black liquid from Prometheus and Alien Covenant is back. Eh. <laughs> anyway. So, uh, it turns out that the prime directive is that this is in the best interest of the company. So, uh, Andy takes, uh, like, this giant canister filled with the syringes of the black li liquid so they could take it to Whalen yutani uh, So, uh, they realize that they probably have to fight their way out. Uh, so uh, uh, Andy manages to get two pulse rifles for uh, Rain and Tyler. So he tells them not to shoot the Xenomorphs or the Facehuggers because of the acidic blood. Because uh, now they have to worry that if the acidic blood goes through the each floor of the ship and manages to uh, make a hole in the hull of the ship, then everything uh, would uh, uh, be chaos, like uh, everything will be destroyed. So uh, now they have to uh, go through this, uh, the hallways uh, filled with these uh, xenomorphs. And then they see the dead bodies of all the scientists with their chests uh, bursting out. And I, what I love is that Rain, the first moment she saw this, and she, along with Andy, agreed that they have to find another way out. So they see this monstrosity of a hallway filled with the dead bodies with uh, people's uh, you know chest bursting and everything. They're like... Fuck this shit. We're going to find another way. <laughs> so that I'm happy about that. Rain is smart. She's like, no, nah, we're going to find another way. But <sighs> apparently, Kay is still alive. So she was yelling for them. And Ty was like, oh, no, we have to go after Kay. So they find Kay. And it turns out that she is not impregnated by anything because she got wounded too much. And the Xenomorphs uh, managed to sense that. So now Kay is bleeding out. 
And now they have this dilemma of trying to use a black liquid on her because they saw the test footage that the rat could he uh, get healed uh, after uh, with the uh, black liquid after it got wounded. So Tyler was about to inject uh, uh, K with it, but Rain stopped him saying, no, we don't know what could happen. Uh, we shouldn't risk it. So what we're going to do, we're going to get her to a cryopod and uh, have her being taken uh, uh, care of at the nearest uh, facility. So that is Rain's plan. So they did not inject her with the black liquid at all. So uh, then Tyler gets captured by one of the xenomorphs. And I don't know how long this tail is because, my God, I think this tail is like 20 feet long or something. Because it impaled, uh, <laughs> it impaled uh, Tyler and it managed to drag it up into the ceiling. And that's when it ha uh, it's about to have its uh, second head moment, you know, like the head inside of the head and about to uh, burst through. And then we realize that there are there is more than one xenomorph. There is like 10 or 12 or something like that. There's a lot more xenomorphs, fully grown ones, and they're about to go after uh, everybody. So Tyler dies. And then uh, Andy was attacked by one of the xenomorphs, and he's because he got knocked back uh, so much, he's now in his frozen position where he really can't do anything. So it's like he's having a seizure, and that's when uh, Rain and uh, Kay managed to go inside the elevator, and then uh, managed to uh, go uh, most of the way up. So Rain decides to try to bring back Andy. So she tells Rain to go, I mean, she tells Kay to go to the cryo chamber and lock herself there and use the autopilot of the space shuttle so it could go to the uh, medical facility, into the uh, mining co uh, colony. So uh, Rain separates from her, and then she's about to have her badass uh, bitch moment like Sigourney Weaver did in Aliens. So she's uh, uh, armed with the pulse rifle. She has the uh, uh, sleeveless uh, T-shirt on and everything. So, yeah, she is being badass. <laughs> so she goes after Andy, and she's uh, trying to remove the science officer mo module, but he wouldn't let her. He tries to cover it up, but uh, she tells her that uh, this is not in the best interest of the company if you die. So it uh, Andy agrees. Then she takes off the module chip, and now Andy is back to normal. So I do like this overall arc with Andy because at first, like, uh, he does the ticks and the twitches and he uh, he uh, speaks uh, very, very uh, slowly and softly. Uh, sometimes it seems like broken English. So then when he uh, got upgraded, he becomes more confident, more stern, but and also talks more like a science officer. So uh, I thought this actor did a very good job with that, and I really like him. And I felt bad that he was joining the dark side when uh, he uh, got, uh, you know, upgraded. And uh, he was uh, basically a tool uh, working for Waylon yutani So now we have Andy back, but with some of the traits of the science officer, like he speaks more clearly now and everything, but he still tells dad jokes. So, yeah, um, I'm glad that, yeah, Andy is one of the best characters in this movie. So uh, at this point, um, I'll talk about the what happens to Kay later. So now let's just focus on uh, Rain and uh, Andy. So Rain and Andy are trying to go uh, back up, but they couldn't because uh, Rook decides to lock all the security protocols, lock all the security gates and everything. So Rain and Andy have no way out. So they believe they're about to die. So uh, then uh, they remember that uh, earlier on, oh, I forgot to mention, earlier on in the movie, uh, the um, the outpost has a problem with the gravity drive. So when it was offline, uh, the gravity drive uh, uh, restarts the cycle like every few minutes. So there's uh, zero gravity, and then gravity comes back. Zero gravity, then uh, gravity comes back. So it keeps doing that cycle when it was offline. So now Rain remembered that idea, so she turned off the gravity. So when the xenomorphs were trying to uh, come after her uh, through this uh, hallway now it's in uh zero now all the xenomorphs are in zero gravity uh andy was uh, holding on to uh rain and rain has the auto aim ability for her pulse rifle so now she's gonna shoot at every single motherfucker uh zombie i mean no not zombie <laughs> xenomorph and a face hugger and shoot them all into pieces and stuff like that this was a very cool sequence man it reminds me so much of aliens you know with the turrets and everything but this time an actual human is uh, holding the gun of the pulse rifle and shooting at everybody and in zero gravity. So this is really, really, really cool. I really like it. But then, unfortunately, that meant that uh, rain caused a very big issue. 
So she killed the xenomorphs. She killed the face huggers. But that means that there are puddles of acid blood swirling all over the this hallway now. And these two have to go through it. So they are they're in zero gravity trying to um trying to avoid all the acid blood. So this was a very cool sequence. Sure, you could call her dumb for causing it in the first place, but at the same time, she kind of had no choice. She was going to die anyway. So yeah, it was uh, getting eaten by xenomorphs or try to fight her way out. So she fought her way out, but uh, unfortunately caused more problems. <laughs> so now she's trying to avoid this acid blood. And at one point, she was very close to hitting the acid blood, but she does a smart thing by using the pulse rifle, shooting it up. It makes, uh, because of the force of the fire, uh, uh, force of the shooting, it made her drop all the way down to the ground to avoid the acid blood. That was freaking cool. I really like that. So they decide to go up the elevator and it turned out that the zero gravity drive is about to restart again. So gravity was about to come back. So uh, when uh, these two uh, these two are trying to go all the way up, Andy was safe, but the uh, rain wasn't. And then the gravity turned back on. She was about to grab Andy's hand and then she falls all the way down and she almost died. Again, very intense sequence. I really love it. And because of the uh, because of the gravity, all the acid blood is going down each and every single level of this outpost, and it finally uh, goes through the hole. And now there's a giant hole, and everything uh, is uh, in um, uh, trouble. So Rain is trying to avoid this one xenomorph that grabbed her leg, and uh, now the elevator is, uh, because of the gravity, the elevator is now uh, falling down. It killed most of the xenomorphs, but um, uh, one xenomorph was smart enough to avoid it. So now this xenomorph is about to kill Rain. One of the facehuggers is about to go after Rain. So uh, she doesn't have her pulse rifle because it's stuck in uh, one of the ladders up above her. And he sees this and he grabs the pulse rifle, shoots the facehugger, and then shoots the uh, xenomorph. And then comes one of the most cringiest things I've seen in a very long time. I could not believe that this made it onto the final reel. I hate it when movies do this too. So, Andy shoots up the xenomorph in the face a lot, and then he says the very classic line from the Alien franchise, Get away from her, you bitch. I groaned. I said why out loud in the theater i hate it when movies do this like there are classic lines like this and then it just ruins the moment when they redo them like in rise of the planet of the apes when he's like get your filthy hand off me you damn uh get your filthy paw off me you damn dirty ape yeah, he had to say that in Rise of the Planet of the Apes or in uh, Alien vs. Uh, Predator Requiem. Get to the chopper! <laughs> this is so fucking stupid! <laughs> uh, and also in The Predator, if it believes we can kill it and get to the chopper and everything. Oh my god, I hate it when movies like this do it! I hate it. <laughs> I really hate it. So, oh my god, this line was not... was not necessary, man. It was not necessary. If Andy didn't even say anything, it would have been badass. But no, you had to ruin this classic line. You did not need to put this line in, man. You did not. That was a bad call. It wasn't even funny. It was grown worthy. I could not believe this had to be done. No, no. If I edit this out, if I edited this movie, I would not add that line. No, it would have been fine without it, okay? Ugh. Anyway, so Andy and Rain managed to get to the shuttle, and uh, they see Kay uh, over there waiting for them, and uh, they uh, made the shuttle leave the outpost, and then uh, Rook is stuck in the outpost. Uh, he was telling them to go to Weyland Yutani, but uh, Rain said, I have different plans. So they decide not to go to Weyland Yutani, but to actually go uh, to the planet that uh, Rain wanted to go to, which takes nine years to get there. So Rook dies inside uh, with the, the collision of the uh, outpost. And that's when the movie should have ended. Like, uh, uh, you know, um, 
Andy is being hooked up so uh, he could uh, uh, be fine for the next nine years. Uh, Kay is in the cryo tube. And also Rain is going to put herself in the cryo tube. The movie could have ended here. It would have been a very solid movie. Sure, you could say it takes a lot of inspiration from the other Alien movies. So it's kind of like the Star Wars, uh, The Force Awakens of the Alien franchise. But I would have been fine with that, okay? Because, again, uh, it did take some inspirations from other uh, movies, but I'm fine with it. I thought it was a very solid Haunted House-style movie with the Xenomorphs and Facehuggers. That's all I wanted. I liked it more than the other movies. But no. It did not end there. It had to keep going. So I didn't say what happened to Kay. So, okay, during the chaos with uh, Andy and Rain trying to survive, we cut back to Kay. Out of nowhere, she decides to inject herself with the black liquid. I was so angry at this decision. I would have preferred it if Tyler injected her already and they have to deal with the consequences of that later. But no, she did hit herself. That pissed me the fuck off right there. I was rooting for this character to survive. I wanted her to survive. I like this character, but she had to do some dumbass thing like that. So yeah, she injected herself with the black liquid. Now let's cut back to the crowd tube part. K is in the crowd tube. Something goes wrong. So uh, Rain takes her out. And they realize that she's fully pregnant, like full belly, everything. So the black liquid was speeding up her pregnancy, which is just like Elizabeth Shaw from Prometheus. This it's repeating the pregnancy scene again, basically. Except that this time, uh, uh, Kay does not get a, a C-section. She actually gives birth. Um, and I'm pretty sure her vagina and ass are destroyed after that because this thing is huge. <laughs> so she gives birth to this giant ass pod and um, she tells uh, Rain to get rid of it. So Rain grabs it, uh, rips off the umbilical cord, uh, grabs it and uh, was about to uh, throw it away. But then she stopped because acid blood is about to come off of the pod. So she stops, uh, she drops it on the ground, and then the pod hatches, and it reveals a human baby. I was shocked at uh, seeing this. I was like, oh my god, this thing looks like a regular ass human? What the fuck is going on now? Because every time they do these hybrid things, you know, with the xenomorphs, uh, it looks, you know, like more like a xenomorph more than a human. But no, this one looks like a regular ass human baby. And I was so confused and I was terrified and I was disgusted. So because of the acid blood around it, it uh, falls to the grate and then falls down into the cargo hold. So, uh, Rain decides to equip herself with the liquid nitrogen tank and tries to go after it. So she goes down there, and the pod already hatched, and, uh, like, a uh, dead skin was already cut, came off. And then you see footprints all along, like, the sand or something like that, or the dirt or something. So you see tiny footprints, and they get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Like, the growth spurt on this guy, my god, this guy needs two uh two minutes to go from a baby to a college graduate <laughs> seriously it becomes a full grown-ass adult within two minutes oh my god man uh the process for this is amazing so uh now we see what this fucking thing looks like this thing has the face of the space jockey from uh, Prometheus and Alien Covenant, but with a tall, slender ass body that's uh, like a human, but at the same time like a xenomorph. Because you do see like uh, where the spines of the xenomorph should be. It's like uh, these holes or some something in the back of this uh, monstrosity. So yeah, it has a face that looks like a space jockey. It has the body that looks like Slender Man, <laughs> and it has a, a very sharp tail. So this thing is like eight foot tall and apparently that this is played by a Romanian basketball player who has very skinny arms, very skinny legs. So yeah, he is terrifying. So this thing manages to go back up to the upper layer and sees uh, Kay, uh, you know, still alive at this point. 
and it decides to suck the life out of her. I thought it was going to do something disgusting, like uh, suck her breast milk or something like that, like a human baby would. But no, no, no. It has like this vampire tongue thing, which is similar to like the second head thing of a xenomorph. But this time it's like his tongue and it has like blades or stuff like that. So he's just sucking the life out of her like a vampire. So, yeah, it kills Kay. It damages um, Andy and... um, what was it? Um, ba, 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 ba. Rain was trying to kill with the liquid nitrogen tank. It failed. And uh, because of that, uh, everything is getting colder. Oxygen uh, levels are uh, getting low. So that's when she uh, puts on the space suit, which makes her look just like Ellie for, uh, in the space suit uh, sequence in uh, The Last of Us Part 2. <laughs> oh, man. So uh, she uh, tries to uh, make it go down to the cargo hold so it could uh, go through the cargo hold and then off the space shuttle. So basically, this se- this final sequence is basically like the same final sequence that was in Alien 1, Aliens, and uh, um, what was it? I guess Alien Resurrection 2, and also uh, Alien Covenant. So yeah, basically, they're just trying to get this monstrosity off of the ship. That's all they have to do. It's been the same thing for these movies. So uh, some people might not like uh, repeating that. Some people uh, do like it. For me, I would have been fine with it, but I felt like this was so unnecessary since we already had a great finale earlier. But now we have a second finale, and I felt like it was dragging on for too long. So, yeah, um... Uh, she was having a tough time because she was trying to open the lever, but then she realized that the uh, the egg sac still has the acid blood, so she threw that on the floor, which uh, caused a giant hole, and now everything is getting sucked out. Her and uh, uh, the uh, human xenomorph uh, hybrid. So uh, hu- the human xenomorph hybrid was trying to take her down, and then she uh, sees that she could use her uh, cable to uh, move the lever so the whole cargo bay could uh, fall through. So she manages to go through the tiny hole, and the cargo hold uh, managed to grab the human xenomorph hybrid and bring him down to the rings, and uh, everything is destroyed. The shuttle manages to put itself into autopilot and goes uh, up in the uh, space, and yep, uh, everything is saved. So... Um, Rain uh, puts uh, Andy inside the crowd chamber. She puts herself in the crowd chamber. She does the final audio log. And that's the end of the movie. <sighs> I did not like I I do not want that sequence. You know, if I ever edited this, I would have <sighs> okay. How would I have done this? I would not show that the rain, I mean K put the black uh, liquid stuff inside her body. I wouldn't have shown that. Actually, I wouldn't show any of the black liquid stuff. (laughs) So I would uh, edit that out. Um, I would just have the outpost being destroyed. Uh, We have uh, Kay, Rain, and Andy still alive and well. Uh, They are not injured or anything. So everyone goes inside the crowd uh, tubes. Um, uh, Rain uh, takes off the uh, module of uh, Andy and she dies. She uh, wants to uh, try to fix him before they go to the planet. And then she does her final audio log, and that would have been it. That would have been a pretty good ending to a solid, entertaining movie in the Alien franchise. It would have been like an hour and 40 minutes long. That would have been fine. That would have been a fine length. But no, we had to have 15 to 20 more minutes of the second ass finale, which, again, I wouldn't... It's not like it's... Uh, it's not like uh, the visuals are bad or anything or the concept was terrible or anything. I just felt like it was just unnecessary. Like, we didn't need to see this human uh, xenomorph hybrid. And also, it looked different uh, from the uh, Alien Resurrection because, uh, you know, that one was from Sigourney Weaver. So it had these uh, weird puppy dog eyes and stuff like that. I thought it would be similar to that. But no, this one looked way more human than xenomorph. It's like... 70% 70% human. <laughs> sure, it still has like the creepy ass face, uh, space jockey with the black eyes thing, but still, uh, it looked more human than a xenomorph. And I guess the con- the design of it is cool and everything, and the idea is cool. But again, I did not w- need this. We didn't need this uh, finale for this. We already had a good finale. It should have just ended. So I felt like this movie took a uh, way. Less is more. It should have done. It should have been less is more. It added a little too much, and that kind of ruined the movie for me. But 
I wouldn't say I'll ever forget that because I kept yelling, what the fuck, every single time I see this thing. So I'll always remember that design. So I guess that's a positive. So yeah, that's how I felt about Alien Romulus. Overall, I thought that was a pretty solid movie until the last 15 to 20 minutes. <laughs> then I kept yelling, what the fuck, what the fuck, what the fuck? <laughs> So, uh, again, it did take inspiration from all the Alien movies. Everything is connected now. Prometheus, Alien Covenant, and also Alien 3 and uh, Alien Resurrection with the whole, like, uh, uh, hybrids and stuff like that. So, yeah, that's how I feel. I do recommend it, though, especially if you're a fan of Alien. So, who knows? Maybe you like this movie a lot more. Maybe you do like the second finale to this. Maybe you have no problems with it. But yeah, if you're not a fan of this franchise, this is not going to change your mind about it. But again, uh, as a horror movie, uh, it's like a haunted house movie with xenomorphs and uh, facehuggers. I dig it. I really dig it a lot. So yep, yeah, that's how I feel about Alien Romulus. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Later.